A simplex converted to a Great Western Railway Prairie Tank, Part 94, installing the hand pump in one of the side tanks, fitting the water bypass valve and making a thread adapter. I'm going to start off with the hand pump. I'm applying a little bit of lubricating oil to the union so that the nut slides onto it OK. When this pump is in the tank, it's going to be really difficult to tighten the nut. It was bad enough undoing it. There isn't much room to move the spanner from side to side. In this close-up, you can see the union nut partially engaged on the thread before using the spanner. I didn't bother filming the spannering sequence because all you could see was the back of my hand. Bolting the pump back into the tank was also fiddly, using these four individually made brass bolts. Luckily, I found a screwdriver that was a perfect fit in the slots a little bit on the tight side. One at a time, I wedged the screwdriver in a slot in the required bolt, and one by one, I bolted the pump onto the bracket. The top of the tanks is going to be painted black, and here I'm rubbing down the cover, which was quite a tight fit in the top of the tank, and when I removed it, I chipped the paint. So this needs to be repaired. First of all, I'm touching in the damage with some etching primer. And this etching primer is called High Build Etching Primer, so it's a bit thicker than normal, and it's ideal for this job. The thickness of the paint fills the gaps in between the green paint. Before touching in the edges with green paint, I left a 24-hour period for the etching primer to dry, even though there was only a small amount of it. I have found that these enamel spray paints do not like etching primer until it's really dry. I painted the top of the tanks using HMG Satin Black and I brush painted this. First of all I squirted some from the aerosol into the aerosol's cap and after a few hours it looked like this and it's only the first coat so I think the top of the tanks are going to look OK. Time now to look at the water bypass valve and here it is after I packed it with Teflon coated yarn to seal it against the pressure. Before fitting the valve I applied a very small amount of lubricating oil. Then all I needed to do was screw in the tap, which simultaneously started to screw the nut onto the thread on the end of the fitting, after which I tightened the nut using my barco spanner as usual. This, by the way, is the water bypass return valve to the tank from the axle-driven pump. The water pump driven by the axle obviously pumps water all the time, and this would not be a good thing because it would just fill the boiler right to the top every time you ran the engine. But luckily, you can open the bypass valve to let some or all of the water back to the tank, depending on how much water you want to go into the boiler. There was, however, a problem with the water outlet from the hand pump. The pipe was the wrong way round. It had a union cone and a nut sticking out, and the nut was damaged. I chopped off this extra piece of pipe that was soldered into the end of the elbow, and here, after drilling it tapping size for quarter by forty, I'm using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap to thread the hole. All I need to do now is make a special adapter which will be quarter by 40 at one end and 5 sixteenths by 32 at the other end. So it's over to my old Boxford lathe, which currently is still the lathe that I do most of the work on. I fitted a piece of brass hexagon bar into the chuck and I'm turning one end of it down to 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. I generally get very close without a micrometer, occasionally I go undersized, but not often. In fact, according to my calibrated eye, one more pass should do it. And here it is. All I need to do now is use my tailstock die holder fitted with a 5 16 by 32 threads per inch die, and rotating the chuck by hand whilst holding the handle of the die holder, I end up with a very accurate 5 16 by 32 threads per inch thread on the end of the piece of bar. A thread adapter is not going to be much good without a hole through the middle. Here I'm initially drilling the hole using a centre drill because I also need the cone part of it. Then I complete the drilling using a 1 8 of an inch diameter twist drill. I'm drilling further through the piece of brass than I need to. So when I part it off I can be sure that the parting tool will break through to the hole. Before progressing any further, I thought it would be a good idea to make sure that a union nut with a coned union fit the part. And as you can clearly see, it looks OK. The die has even beveled the edge of the hexagon, which is good. I'd like to take this opportunity to show you an operation that you shouldn't really do, but I do it frequently. 
I'm using a parting tool as a standard cutting tool. You can only take very slight cuts. And this doesn't work if you use removable tip parting tools. The tip will just fall out. But it's okay for reducing diameters like this when you just need a diameter to be soldered into something. This part is a thread adapter, so I parted it off and turned it round in the chuck. Now it's time to cut the quarter by 40 thread. Face across the end first. Then carefully reduce the diameter of the brass hexagon down to an exact quarter of an inch. Using my micrometer set to a quarter of an inch tells me that everything's fine. So I can go ahead and remove the cutting tool and use the tailstock die holder once again, but this time fitted with a quarter by 40 die. You always need to remove cutting tools from the tool post and drills from the tailstock chuck. If you don't, you will cut yourself. I speak from experience. In no time at all, by using the tailstock die holder, I have a perfect 40 threads per inch thread. Initially, I didn't drill the hole deep enough. Even though I said I was going to do, I never did. But now there's a hole all the way through. The part is finished. I used some Loctite 542 thread sealant as usual to make sure there was no leakage between my fitting and the thread in the elbow. I tightened the part in place using my Barco spanner as usual and just gave it an extra nip to make sure it was tight. The hexagon part of this fitting was slightly marked by the chuck jaws and if I was going to leave it like this I would have polished it up. But when I repaint the elbow I will also repaint the fitting. That's it for this episode. This series is rapidly reaching its conclusion. Hopefully, at nearly a hundred episodes, there won't be many more to do. That's it for this one. Please stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainstream Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.